I was asked to demonstrate how I edited this image, but in fact I have chosen this one, which was shot at the same time. I think the composition of this image is much better, but it's not perfect. And looking back now, I regret not allowing a little more space at the top and maybe to the left of the image, maybe zooming out just a little more. It's not a great thing to rely on fixing our mistakes in Photoshop because we really should be putting in the effort at the button press stage. But these things do happen. Now having said that, my regrets at the taking stage with this particular shot do allow me to demonstrate some great new features. By the way, the histogram, which I'm almost certain to refer to, used to be a complete enigma to me, but not anymore. I balance what it's telling me with what I see within the image. The histogram is a tricky subject to teach because it's one of those things you just have to get a feel for yourself. But it is well worth the effort and you will get used to it. Now we do have quite a bit of work to do on this image, so we need to crack on, but some years ago I did make a series of videos called From a Sow's Ear to a Silk Purse to demonstrate some of the things we could do with this software. But of course that was some years ago. Maybe we would change that now to a couple of lines mentioned to me by a friend the other day. The impossible we can achieve without a problem. It's the miracles that take us just a little bit longer. But let's start here in the same way as we did with the previous with a black and white conversion and an auto setting. Straight away I think or my brain is telling me I want the image to be darker. So I'm going to drop the exposure down and get it to a state which I think looks a good starting point. Now remember the histogram, we always keep our eye on it, but we can see quite a nice mountainous shape here. We've got a little bit of block up of the dark tones in the image, but they're not significant. And of course, we're probably going to do some work on those as we move through the manipulation. Just before I move on to the masks, I'm going to go to the effects because I want to put a little bit of clarity into the image. And maybe a little touch of dehaze. But now I'm going to begin with the masks. Going to my masks at the top right, I'm going to be using a linear gradient. We'll start at the top. I'm going to click about halfway down. We can see what areas are going to be affected by the softness in this area and the solid color above. So what do I want to do here? Let's take down the highlights. Not many up there, I think, but exposure is going to do the most. But to improve the contrast of the sky, maybe some blacks, some whites, Back to the exposure because I'm looking at it all the time. I've just spotted a dust spot right up at the top left. If you can see that, we'll deal with that too. But we can also put a little bit of clarity into the sky sometimes. That sometimes helps or even a little bit of dehaze too. These are all going to be more personal than absolutely essential. But now I can see that I need one at the bottom as well. So let me speed things up by touching the G key. That is the shortcut key to select a gradient or linear mask. Click and drag up from the bottom. And I'm gonna do the same here. Let's drop the exposure down a little bit. The blacks and the whites up. See how that retains nice contrast in the foreground. But now I'd like even a little more at the top and the bottom. So touching the G key again, back to the top, just the little top section. Just want to take that down a little more. And the bottom section, I'm gonna do the same, touching the G key. I will use as many masks as I feel I need. And there you can see we're getting quite a nice balance already. 
Now, if we're looking very carefully at the image, let me go back to my main tab. We can see that maybe we've got a little bit of weakness on the right and left side. More on the right, I would suggest, but I quite like the nice white snow here, so I want to retain that. And if I lose that a little bit, then I'll bring it back. But touching the G key once again, click and drag over here. And I'll drop the exposure down here, not too much. The one thing I like about these tools, of course, if I do want to go heavier, but it makes some aspects of the masking darker than I want, maybe like the trees, then I can use subtract, brush, and with the flow rate set quite low, I can relieve some of the intensity of the darkness I've put in place. So I get the effect in all the right places, but I don't have to accept it in any compromised way. I can set up the image just as I want it. Let's deal with that spot at the top left of the sky because I can, my eyes keep falling on that. I'll pick up my healing brush. One tap or at least one or two taps will deal with that. Now as I sit here looking at the image, I'm wondering if I've overdone my linear gradient at the top of the hills in the background. So let me go back to them. Let me select the one that I need to adjust, and it's definitely going to be that one. Now, even though I've made those changes, I can change them again with the sliders. I can pick up the bounding box and I can move the bounding box around. So if I wanted to lift it slightly to alleviate the tops of those hills, I can do that. But if I wanted to keep the intensity in the sky and I didn't find that there was a need to lift this, then I can go to subtract my brush, keep that flow rate low, and I would zoom in on this, but I'll do this at normal size just for speed. And I would just relieve a little bit of that darkness right at the top, because I think the snow being nice and white on the top of those mountains is quite important. So let's take a look at them next. I'm going to go to my masks once again. This time I'm going to pick up a brush. What do I want to do with the snow? Well, they're highlights, so I'm going to lift them a little bit. A little bit of exposure. I'm going to zoom in. I'm going to make my brush as big or as small as I need it, but I am just going to wipe over these areas. And you can see that the work I'm doing here is very subtle. I'm not trying to rush this. I want to keep it gentle and measured so that my work can't be seen once I've done it. I have to go over the area a number of times to build up the tones that I want. And I'll continue along the top and hit Control zero when I'm done. Now what I also did was just lift the tones in that block of trees up to the mast on the boat. They were looking a little bit too dark. Exactly the same technique as used with the snow. Just used a brush, but I lifted the shadows and lifted the exposure just a little bit. Didn't need a great deal, it just needed enough. Now I'd like to take a look at the boat and its reflection. I want to zoom in fairly large. And I think with my masks, there's a number of ways we can do this, but I'm going to keep it simple. I'm going to go to my brush, reminding you that the flow is set low. What do I want to do there? Well, mainly it's going to be exposure. I want to lift the shadows at the back of the boat, so we'll lift those two. And I'm just going to brush down the boat, just to lift those tones a little bit. And there you can see the effect I'm having. Hopefully it's going to be positive when we zoom out. Just to give a bit more sparkle and detail there. It is tempting to push up the flow here, but it's a good idea to resist that temptation. Let's have a look at that. Control zero. I'm still not entirely happy with my sky. So I'm gonna go back to my masks. I'm gonna go back to that shading that I did before. 
I'm going to touch the V key to bring up the bounding box and click on it. I am going to adjust it. I'm just going to lift the base of that a little bit. These sort of things are pretty normal things that I do as I look at the image over time. And then the very top, I've decided I want a little more. Let's give a little blackness, a little whiteness, maybe even a bit of exposure. I'm just trying to hold that in nice and tight. What I'd like to do next is to deal with these boys here because they're quite distracting. So I think we'll zoom in on one of them and we'll take a look at dealing with those next. Let's go to the option in the toolbox here and what I want to choose here is either the healing brush or the content aware remove. Let's use that. I'm going to use the square bracket keys. I'm going to make a shape that's going to cover the entire thing and I'm going to make one click. Not so good. Control Z. Let's make that a little bit bigger. Click. That's not bad. I think we could live with that. But we've got a little mark there and I'll just give that another touch. Let's move across to this one. Let's switch now to the healing brush and we'll see if that does a better job. This is a little bit bigger I think but we'll, we'll get it to that size and click. I think that's done a slightly better job to be honest. A couple of little black spots there, we'll deal with those too. Look like something on the rope. And there's the final one with a nice cormorant sitting on it. But sorry, but we've got to let you go. Now I can't get my brush big enough to deal with this in one go. So I'm just going to click and paint down a little bit. And as you can see, a superb job was done. Now, as I say many times, a lot of this work is purely personal anyway. So I'm going to call it a day at this point. I'm going to go back to my main tab. I'm going to go down to my detail. And the last thing I'm going to do is to add a bit of denoise. Let's wait for the panel to appear on screen. This was shot with 100 ISO, so we shouldn't have too much. Let's click around the boy. There's the before. There's the after. Maybe I could get away with a bit more here. 68 is my setting. The default's about 50. But before, after. I doubt when you're watching a video, especially if you're watching on a small iPad, that you can even see the difference. But it's there and it's well worth having. Now as soon as this has been completed, and you'll see it's looking like it's going to take just a, a minute or so, then I'll open this up into Photoshop and we'll finish off there. Now with the image opened up into Photoshop, it's not looking too bad, especially as we haven't spent a great deal of time on it. But I did say that I regretted not allowing more space above the mast and giving a little bit more space all around. So what I want to do here is to go to my image menu, change this from its grayscale back to RGB, because I want to use the AI generative fill. Picking up the crop tool, I'm going to drag the top. I don't want too much, probably about that is going to do it. Click into the generative fill, hit the enter key, and we'll let Photoshop become a miracle worker. It's impressive, isn't it? Now Photoshop does give us three different versions of what I've asked in the sky, but as I click between each one, there's not a lot between them, and I think probably we would accept any one of those. But you just need to pick the one that you like best. But what I'd also like to do is to give a little more space on the left-hand side. Now that may be a bit more tricky because we've got a bridge here, so what I'd like to do here is go back to my layers and I just want to merge these two layers. Merge visible will do that. Because I'm going to see if I can extend this canvas a little bit. It may be a bit tricky given the bridge here. I don't want to go too far, just a little way. Just to give that little more space. Now if I click into the box and hit the enter key, 
let's see how Photoshop does. Now at first glance that doesn't look too bad. I think most of us would just accept that if this picture was presented to us. Let's take a look at the other two examples we have. That one I'm not too keen on. But that one is much better. Let's take a closer look. It's not perfect. But I think we would probably just about get away with that because it's right on the edge and it's quite dark and it just gives me the width and the height that I'm looking for. Now the one downside of this AI generative fill is we do get a different result every time. If I recreated exactly the same as what I've just done and maybe chose a little more canvas or a little less then it's going to impact on what I'm trying to achieve. I've had a change of mind with the generative fill on the left hand side, never being one to accept anything that's not meeting my requirements. Let's try a different approach. So let's do something different. I'm going to go to my image menu, canvas size. I'm going to anchor my canvas on the right hand side because all I want to add on the left is a couple of inches. I'm not actually sure exactly what I want so I'm going to put three inches in there. Then I'm going to select my crop tool and have a look at the composition. Actually that wasn't a bad guess and that was a guess. I didn't know it was going to need three inches. Now I'm going to go back to my move tool and I'm going to stretch my canvas. Control T will bring up the free transform tool. Holding the shift key I can drag this out to the left. Hit the enter key when I'm ready there we have a result. Now of course if we were working on an image that contained people, buildings or some other topic which may not take a stretch of that nature. But a landscape or seascape, generally speaking, we can get away with it most of the time. Now one other thing that viewers should be aware of when watching a video of this nature is that the presenter, the recorder of the video, is under some pressure to try to create something of interest but not allow the video to get too long. So if we were doing this as our own personal work, of course we would have just a little more freedom. But I think we've created a pretty good sparkling monochrome, so I'll leave it there and say I'll see you next time.